Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about a few physiology related points with regard to the fetal circulation. First, we'll consider four organs of the uh, fetus. First, the fetal lungs, then the fetal liver along with the portal vein and the inferior vena cava as the exit point, the fetal cardia along with the pulmonary artery and the iota, and then last but not the least, it will be the placenta. The placenta is the site where most of the blood will get oxygenated. The oxygenated blood from the placenta will reach the portal vein through a structure called as the umbilical vein. Now, when the umbilical vein blood mixes with the blood in the portal vein, this blood can go into the liver parenchyma. But this liver parenchyma is an area of high resistance. So, there is another pathway which is made out which acts as a low resistance pathway which connects the portal vein directly to the inferior vena cava. And this structure is called as the ductus venosus. So the inferior vena cava has blood which is coming from the liver parenchyma and also the shunted blood which comes from the ductus venosus. Now this mixture of blood where the blood is mixture of both oxygenated and deoxygenated blood goes and travels through the inferior vena cava and then the superior vena cava and enters into the right atrium. Now, before we go into the further journey of this blood, we should consider two important points. First thing, the fetal lungs are collapsed in nature. And because of that, the vasculature in the lungs of the fetus will be an area of high resistance. And because it is a high resistance area, it will be a low flow, low flow zone. So, high resistance, low flow zone is the term used to describe the pulmonary vasculature in a fetus. Because the resistance in the pulmonary arterial system is very high, that means the resistance in the pulmonary artery is high, that means the pressure is high. That means the resistance or pressure in the right ventricle will be high and that also means the pressure in the right atrium is higher than that of the pressure in the left atrium. Okay, now that once that is done, one more thing you should consider is there is an anatomical defect in between the right atrium and the left atrium and that is nothing but the foramen oval. And because of this pressure changes, the blood flow occurs from the right atrium to the left atrium in this direction. Keep in mind that this shunting of blood from right atrium to left atrium occurs for only one third of the volume of the blood. The rest two third of the volume of blood goes into the right ventricle and then enters into the pulmonary artery. But since pulmonary artery is a high pressure area, there is another low flow zone which occurs. It's a conduit kind of structure which occurs between the right uh, pulmonary artery and the iota. And this structure is called as the ductus arteriosus. And because of the pressure differences, wherein the pulmonary artery has higher pressure than the iota, the flow will be unidirectional. That is from the pulmonary artery to the iota. So right now iota carries the mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood and this blood is circulated or towards the throughout, throughout the body. Once all the tissues receive this blood, the rest of the blood, the deoxygenated blood is sent back to the placenta for oxygenation by another structure called as the umbilical artery. Now, this is what happens in a normal fetal circulation. What happens once the newborn takes its first breath? That is what happens after the baby is delivered. The first thing that happens is this umbilical artery, umbilical vein is cut off because clamping of the cord is done after the baby is delivered. So, this structure is closed off. That is why the blood circulation from the placenta to the liver, fetal liver, uh, the liver of the newborn is cut off. And because of that, this ductus venosus start undergoing atrophy. So that is also cut off. The next thing that happens is, in the fetus, the lungs, they open up. So this thing is gone. And once that happens, what, where the pulmonary system was a high resistance system in the fetus, now in the newborn, this resistance will become very, very low. This low resistance in the pulmonary vasculature is reflected in the decreased pressure in the pulmonary artery, the decreased pressure in the right ventricle and the decreased pressure in the right atrium. So for all practical purposes, now the left part of the heart 
has a higher pressure changes or reflects a higher pressure than the right side of the heart so reversal tries to occur in bit from the left atrium to the right atrium but since foramen ovale acts as a one way wall the foramen ovale gets closed and similarly this ductus arteriosus will have a reversal of flow that is blood flow will, will occur from aorta to pulmonary artery but this also is prevented as the uh, prostaglandin synthesis stops okay in the ductus arteriosus and this ductus arteriosus also closes after some time so these are the changes which are occurring once the newborn takes its first breath hope this video was useful thank you for watching